Hello Explorers, welcome back. So we're gonna do the promised weekly budget and weekly transfer of funds video. This may be a hot mess because I've actually never done this on video and if you saw me do this in person, like in real time, it is, it's always a mess. Um, it's a lot of erasing and writing and erasing and writing. So let's start with doing the weekly transfer of funds. I did already go through and write down uh, what it is that I need to pull from each envelope. And the way that I do this is by going through my credit card, um, writing down what the charge, how much the charge is, where it was from, and what envelope that's going to be pulled from. Obviously, that's something that I can't do on video with you guys because I'm not going to be showing my credit card, but also because I use my phone to film. So that is the only thing I did ahead of time. So let's start pulling. So the first thing was... I don't even have it over here, so I'm going to have to grab that in just a second. Um, let's see. So we'll start with my husband's lunch. He actually overspent. I budget $25 for his lunch for work, and he spent $33.31. So we're going to put take the $25 that I had budgeted, which means we are negative $8.00. And 31 cents. So we'll have to figure out where we're going to pull that from to cover that. Let me grab a marker. So now we can mark off his lunch. Next we did... Okay. <laughs> medical. We were only going to pull $9 from medical because um, we got my son some... Uh, kids Motrin when we were in California from Walgreens and that was eight dollars and some change so we were gonna pull nine dollars however as most of you know I ended up in the emergency room last night and that was a three hundred and fifty dollar bill so I'm still just going to pull the nine dollars for right now and I'm gonna figure out where I'm taking that 350 from because even if I wipe out this medical envelope it's not gonna be enough to cover it so rather than clearing out all of my envelopes, I'd rather just see if I can maybe take it from my Etsy funds where it'll cover it in full. So I'm not even going to bother putting that on here. We put the $9 for medical. So let's mark that one off. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. And give me one second because I need to go get my purse because that has the majority of it that we're going to be pulling. Okay, I am back. So now what we need to pull is we went to Smith's and the total was $64.89. So we're going to, but we also went to Smith's again and spent two hundred and thirty two dollars and seventy three cents so the combined total between the two of them leaves us with a negative thirty five sixty two so currently we're at forty three ninety three in the negative so this is all of the grocery money gas we let me mark those off Let's mark off the grocery so that's this grocery <coughs> and this grocery gas we spent 1456 on one trip and 74 on another trip we're going to go ahead and pull the full 100 that was in here because if you guys remember this is actually two weeks worth um which leaves us putting in a positive eleven dollars and forty cents so we're pulling an extra eleven dollars and forty four cents So that's going to help cover some of that um, overage we spent on grocery. So let's pull that $100. And we'll mark that off. Uh, where was that? That was this one and this one. And the reason we spent so much on gas is because we had to... Um, not only did we have to fill up our car and gas is like 529 right now, 
but we had to make sure we topped off the rental before we dropped it off. Um, takeout, we spent, where is it? We spent $10.93 on takeout. However, we are going to pull the full 100 because um, the reason we didn't spend very much on takeout is because we spent the majority of it on groceries. So we're going to let the leftover from takeout cover what we had spent on groceries. So we are putting in, um, where is that? We're putting in an extra 8907, which means currently we have an overage of $56.58 going onto the credit card. So let me mark off that. Then we spent $15.97 at Marshall's and $36.50 at Ulta. So that needs to come out of personal care. We overspent by $2.47. So minus $2.47 from that. This, this one was kind of a, there was a lot that couldn't be helped with these uh, trips. Then we went to Ross and we spent $59.13, which is $19.13 over what I have available in my household envelope. However, some of that was actually, uh, my husband spent like $10 on liquid death I think this is called liquid death. Yeah, that like canned water. So technically that would have came out of grocery slash takeout anyways. So we're going to pull the $40 from household. That means we went over by $19.13. So currently we only have an overage of $34.98. I hope this is making sense to everyone. So we can mark off Ross because it is now covered. And I think that covers everything. Um, so the total for what we had spent on the credit card was $475.60. So now that we've pulled from all of the prospective envelopes, let's just make sure we have enough to cover that bill. Did we overspend? Absolutely. We definitely did. But it was things that were highly, highly needed. So we have one, two, three, four, four fifty. 470, 490, 510, 530, 550, 570, 580, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 587. How did I end up with. Where did I mess up? Oh, I see. So we are putting in 587. We only spent. 475 technically and 60 cents so we're putting in an extra 111 dollars and 40 cents and that's okay um because we actually need to go to the grocery store and grab a couple of things today so that will that overage that we're putting in there will probably we would have probably had to turn around and take it out any uh pull it from an envelope anyways and this way we don't have to worry about it now, we also do need to pull um, the money for Chubby Cattle. We did go to Chubby Cattle, so all of this is getting pulled as well. We didn't spend all of this. Um, I think we spent a total of, our bill was like $110, and then we had tip, obviously. But then after Chubby Cattle, we stopped and got drinks, um, since we were so under on our bill. 
We stopped and got drinks. So we're just going to go ahead and pull all of this, put all of this on the credit card and just consider it extra payment towards getting that credit card paid off. So we're putting $262 towards the credit card. And I, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and put this in there too, since all of this needs to go back to the credit card. So that is pulled. And the very last thing we need to do is... Um, I finally wrote a check for the HOA. We'll drop that off today. So I need to pull the uh, $55 from the bills envelope. Um, to cover the rest of that fine. And so this will not go back to the credit card. This is going to go into my bank account to cover when that check clears. The other, in total, I'm paying $200 towards the fine. <coughs> However, the other $145 I had already put in the account when I planned on taking the check. But then um, that didn't happen because it was a rental and then, you know, all that stuff came up. So since then, we did another paycheck cash stuffing and we have an extra $55. So this needs to go to the bank account to cover when that check clears. And that is it for the weekly pulling of funds. I hope that makes sense. Basically what I did, like I said, I went through my credit card, figured, wrote down all of the places that I had charges, how much those charges were for, what envelope those were being pulled from. Some of them, like I said, we went over. So Smith's, we spent $64.89. That was coming out of grocery. That left us with $197.11. We went to Marshall's, spent $15.97. That was coming out of personal, which left us with $34.03. Ulta, $36.50 was coming out of personal, which put us in the negative for personal at $2.47. Ross, $59.13 was coming out of home needs. That left us in the negative $19.13. And that's just for these envelopes. That's not in total. That just means these are, I need to figure out where I'm going to pull this $2.47 from. This 1913 from my husband's training lunch. He spent 33.31. I only budget 25, so I needed to figure out where I was coming up with the extra eight dollars and 31 cents. 7-Eleven. We spent 14.56 filling up the rental before we returned it. That was coming out of the gas envelope, which left us with 85 dollars and 44 cents in the gas envelope. We then went to Smith's again for groceries. This time we spent 232 dollars 73 cents. That was coming out of grocery, but that was $35.62 more than we had in grocery, so I needed to come up with where that was going to come from. Went to McDonald's for one of the kids, spent $10.93. That was coming out of takeout, which left us with $89.07 in takeout. Smith's, uh, this was for gas, however, not grocery, so $74 on gas. That was coming out of the gas envelope, which left us with $11.44 left in gas. We went to Walgreens, spent $9. That was coming out of medical, which left us $86 in medical. So then I go through and I look, okay, grocery ha grocery went over. So where can I come up with that $35.62 for, to cover the extra for grocery? Well, we didn't use our takeout this week, so we'll take we'll use takeout to cover that. Uh, same thing with my husband's training lunch. We'll use takeout to cover that. Um, and so on. And so that's how that's how I do it. That's certainly not how you guys have to do it. And every week is not going to be this way. Uh, normally, I do not spend more than we have. But it, it was a weird week. It's September was a weird month. This was technically um, from September. So at the end of the day, we were able to cover everything. We did not leave any balance uh, or add to the balance on the credit card. And that's really what matters. We had it in the envelopes to cover it. Um, we're actually going to be doing putting significantly over since in supermarket sweep, there was $262. And I think we only spent a hundred and probably 40. If I'm, I don't know exactly how much tip my husband left. Um, but after tip and then after the drinks we picked up, we probably spent 140 
So we're going to be putting an extra 120 in there from that. So now all I have to figure out is how I'm going to come up with the money for the emergency room. <laughs> that is $350. I have not sat down and figured out where that's going to come from. I'm going to take care of all of this. This will actually go to the bank because I do not have the money in the bank to make the payment for the credit card. So this will actually go to the bank, get deposited, and then I will make whatever that deposit amount is. That's how much I will make the payment on the credit card. This money will go to the bank um, so that when the check for HOA finds clears, um, that is covered. So that is it for the weekly transfer of funds. I told you guys it's kind of chaotic, um, but that's just how I handle it. Hopefully I'll figure out how to explain it better as I do it more. Um, right now it's just <coughs> the way that I do it for myself and trying to show somebody else can be a little difficult. So now let's work on this week's budget. So we're going to definitely going to need the calculator. Um, this is going to be the first week of October. Um, see, sometimes I go in and I put in the my guesstimates ahead of time, like months in advance. But we can erase all that so you guys can see how I do it. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me go to that page. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. So the first thing I do is I have, I get my husband's paycheck which his paycheck is $26.96. However, I know that I have extra bills that I need to pay. So I am gonna supplement it a little bit with um, collab pay. It's not really collab pay. I sold something on Facebook. So we're gonna put that extra money in there. So we have $27.47 this week to work with. And that's actually for the next two weeks. So let me put that up here. I hope you guys can see. Let me zoom in so that you can actually see. Okay. So we have $27.47 for his check. I know that I need to finish paying mortgage. And here's how I do this. I will pull down the binder. And I will literally go through my bills. So in mortgage, I know that I currently have $1,000. So I need to completely finish it off because this paycheck, uh, this week ends on the 11th, meaning we will not get another paycheck before mortgage is due, so it has to finish it off. So I know out of his paycheck, before I even budget, I need to take out $13.02.34 to cover the rest of mortgage. I also need to pay our car payment before... Um, before he gets paid... Again, so directly out of this paycheck, we currently have $200 sitting in the Ford envelope. So to finish off that payment, I need to put away $259. And then I need to pay my water bill of $74.37. So what I do is I take his check, his check, which is $27.47, subtract what I'm put I'm keeping in the bank for mortgage, subtract what I'm keeping in the bank for Ford, and then subtract what I'm keeping in the bank for water. That leaves me with $1,111. I then need to divide that by two because half of that will be for this week and half of that will be for next week. So right here where it says total, that's where I will put that we have $555 and 64 cents, which I will actually just leave that at $555. So we have 555 to work with. 
Um, for mortgage, we're going to put 2302, which you guys won't actually see me do that because again, I will leave the, um, the 1302 in the bank for trash. We are going to put away $50. So from the 555 that I have to work with, I need to subtract $50. I'm going to put 50 right here which means going towards trash, my trash, my quarterly trash bill, I now have 35 out of the 55 that's needed. And then the 45 of this 50 is actually what's going towards the balance that I had. And so I left myself a little note that I now have $35 left. Um, no, sorry, that was from last week. I didn't update these numbers. That's why this was written in here like this. So I believe this is actually 40. Let me just double check really quick. Oh, you know what, you guys? I did not pull. I made the trash payment and did not pull it. So some of this money actually does need to go to the bank, and I already covered that cost. So 20 30 so this $50 actually can go back to the bank because I already made that trash payment. Um, and I covered that. I must have covered it with collab pay. I just need to deposit the money. So, uh, so of the 50 that I'm putting in, $5 goes towards my actual bill. The other 45 goes towards um, the balance that I have. So now for HOA, we're going to put in the usual 13. There is nothing left in the HOA envelope. Nope, there is. Okay, hold on. This is set up from, I am now seeing. Apparently I didn't erase this. So September had five weeks in it. And this planner does not is not set up for five weeks. So when I did the fifth week of, of September, that's why it was already written in on here. So that's where the confusion came in. I need to erase all of these numbers because they are not correct. And that is why. <laughs> they are last week's numbers. Okay. So in trash, we should have $40 in there come this week, which means I need to leave 35 in there. Okay, so when I, <laughs> of the $50 that I'm putting in for trash, five of it will go towards the monthly bill, or the quarterly bill, which means I have $40 of the 55 that I need. The other 45 will go towards the balance. Ay, ay, ay. HOA, I'm putting in $13 as usual, and we already have 13 in the envelope. So now we have 26 out of my quarterly bill of 150. For the HOA fine, we're going to put in $50. 25 of that will go towards Friday's um, fine. The other 25 will go towards the balance that I had, which I will get an update on that when I go drop the check off. Progressive, we're going to put in $26. Let me see how much that puts, gives us in progressive. So in progressive, we already have 26. So that means we will have 52 of the 108 that is needed for the monthly bill. Okay. Sorry, that made that more chaotic than it needed to be. We're not going to put anything into Ford because we are making that payment. So the 259 that we would have put in here is just going to stay in the bank and we're going to make that payment. So let's go do the math on this. We had 555 to work with this week. We're putting 50 into trash, so we need to take that out. We're putting 13 into HOA. We're putting 50 into HOA fines. And we're putting 26 into progressive. So now we have $416 left to work with. I skip my sinking funds and I go straight over to my cash envelopes because obviously groceries are very, very important. I give us 
$150. I think I'm going to up it this week to $175. Gas, I normally give us $50, but gas has gone up so much that I'm going to up my gas to $75. And then takeout, we're going to leave takeout at $50. So now let's subtract the $175 for grocery, the $75 for gas, and the $50 for takeout. That leaves us with $116. Um, you know what? I'm actually not going to up grocery and we can just use the leftover from takeout. So let's add that 25 back in. So we have 141 to work with for sinking funds, savings challenges, etc. So automatically need to put 25 into Uno. And I like to do 20. I'd like to do 25 into the monthly. So let's subtract 50 from there for those two. And then what I like to do is t grab my savings challenge binder. And over here, I will put challenges and give myself kind of a budget for each one so that I make sure that I'm kind of hitting all of my challenges. So for the monthly challenge... I've budgeted 25. Next we have the Thanksgiving challenge. Obviously we always put, I label that as leaf. We put $5 into there. So subtract $5. Next is, we'll come back to this one. Next is a beaver walked into a bar. How much do we want to budget for this one? We don't have a ton to work with this week, so let's just give $5 to this beaver over here. So for the beaver challenge, we are going to budget $5. Make sure we subtract that 5 Next is spa day. Um, since we wiped out personal care, I definitely need to build that one back up. So for spa day... We're going to budget $10 just to be on the safe side. Obviously, it's a scratch off, so I don't know how much it's going to be. So it's safe to say $10. Let's take $10 from there. Um, the ghost one. Again, we're going to do a small amount. The smallest on here is $3. That's what we're going to do because we don't have a lot to work with this week. So for ghost... We're going to do $3. Pumpkin spice latte color one. We'll do PSL. We're only going to do one bar on that, which is $5. This is my PSL scratch off. Again, it's a scratch off, so we have no idea what it's going to be. So let's just say $10 to be safe. So minus 10. Christmas in July. We'll put Xmas. <coughs> we'll budget $5 for that one. Because all of her icons are $1 to $2 a piece. Um, the smiley face challenge. We only have $3 icons left. Let's put three in that one. We can't budget for star notes. The Disney challenge. Those are $5 icons. And then we have the gumball challenge. Which we know each gumball is worth $3, so we'll take $3 from there. That only leaves us with $37. Four games, which is not a lot. It's going to be a very, very tight week. So then I'll move over here and I'll go <coughs> games. Uno, we know we put 25 in and I already subtracted that. Next is Slytherin. Since it is a short week, 
I am going to go through the deck and pull a card of my choice because I want to put something into it, but I can't play the way I should. So we're going to do the lowest card, which is two. Otherwise, we'd have to skip it all together. Um, Blinky, we can't choose. It's a dice game. So we automatically are going to budget the highest amount we could possibly roll, which is a six. Next is Shut the Box. We may have to skip Shut the Box. And Villains, let me see. Villains, I think we can do $10. Usually we're pretty safe with $10. That leaves us with $19 for Shut the Box. Um, yeah. <laughs> so now what I actually just re remembered is when I had a little note on trash that said there was $35 left, that's because after I made last week's payment, there was only a $35 balance. We were technically putting $45 towards this. We need to correct this because I can't even put 45 towards it because I don't even have a $45 balance. So I need to bring this down to $40. Five of that will go towards my actual bill. The other 35 will go to paying it off. So we will write that it's paid. That means we actually have $10 more to be putting towards these. I hope that made sense. This one was a, this was a tough week to figure out. Now we do have one more game. Uh, obviously we won't be able to do road trip savings challenge this week, but we do have this game. Um, it's called struggle. It's from Liz and Les. I would like to put something towards it, but I think what I'm going to do is I will do my savings challenges first this week instead of games, because whatever is not used on the scratch offs for savings challenges, I'm going to put towards games. Normally you guys know I play games first um, so that I know what I have left over to put into savings challenges. This week I'm going to do it differently because I don't have a lot to work with. So whatever's left over from challenges will go all towards games. So I'm trying to think, is there anywhere else I could adjust to give us a little bit more room to work with? Oh, something about gas. So we're not actually going to spend, more than likely, we probably won't spend $75 on gas. However, it's a nice even number. Not even, obviously, it's an odd number. But it's a nice good number to work with. Um, I know it's a big jump from the 50 I had been doing. But what my thought process was, if we don't spend all, 50, all $75, um, I will leave it in the envelope. And then once that gets to be about $100, or 50 or maybe we'll say 50. Once it builds up to be about $50 extra, I will go ahead and put that towards um, road trip savings challenge. So whatever we don't spend on gas, same way with grocery, whatever we didn't spend on grocery went towards supermarket sweep. Well, whatever we don't spend on gas will go towards uh, the road trip savings challenge. But that is how I do my budget. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, if the questions are on TikTok, a lot of times I will do a video response. If I don't respond to your question on TikTok, it's usually because I plan on addressing it in my next YouTube video because I think it's something that needs to be in a video that everybody can see um, because not everybody watches TikTok. If you leave it on YouTube, more than likely, I always address it in a YouTube video just because you can't really do video responses, um, like many video responses on YouTube the way you can on TikTok. So that is that. I hope that helped you guys. Um, I hope I didn't speed through it or confuse anybody. But yeah, we are working with a very tight budget this week. So until next time, bye.